The third document is um, the actual uh, seating list for the, the uh, Hall of Fame dinner. Um, and this, it's taking place on July the 20th, 1962 at the Waldorf Astoria Hotel in New York. Uh, and so at the, at the head table you have uh, people like, for, for instance, Whitney Young, who was a civil rights activist. Uh, you have, uh, if you look down the list, um, uh, you have uh, the, the entire uh, Robinson family and friends. You have the heavyweight champion, Floyd Patterson, who's there with family and friends. You have, of course, Duke Ellington, uh, who is, of course, the, uh, the, the jazz, uh, jazz royalty, I guess, you, if you will. But, and then you can go on, and on down the list um, and find different names that maybe that jump out. Uh, but I guess what's most important about this is that the range of people who are in attendance, uh, it's, it, it, it's not just political. There are people who support the idea of a movement, not just the civil rights movement, but this human rights movement, uh, this idea that uh, you know, here is someone who we, we've come to honor because of what he's not only been able to achieve as a baseball player, that's only one aspect of his life, but what he has done for American people, for oppressed people, he's demonstrated that one person can make a difference. And so in doing that, they're there to honor him for that. He grew up in a neighborhood that was uh, integrated by his family, but he was still ostracized and tormented because he was black. And he used his athletic ability that he developed as a child to overcome those differences. Uh, the fact that he was able to become such a you know, wonderful athlete at UCLA, it's only one thing, but he used that, um, you know, he channeled his anger and his frustration into, like they said in baseball, into base hits, into touchdowns, into home runs. Uh, so, so he was able to take something that was uh, a day-to-day -day kind of a, um, experience in racism and being you know, separate from society and use it to his advantage. He refused to participate in the kind of Jim Crow society that the black players in the Negro Leagues were accustomed to. He refused to, you know, eat, uh, you know, out of the paper bags that were handed to them with sandwiches. He said, if we're going to buy your gas, we're going to be able to use your restaurant. And we want to, you know, use your restroom if we need to. And so he challenged the status quo, and some people didn't like that because they felt that he thought he was better than them, when in fact he was demonstrating once again what his mother uh, demonstrated to him, that you're a human being, you have the right to be treated as such.